So these are two display screens that connect to your JK BMS and they show you information about your battery. And today we're gonna to have a look at everything that you need to know about these screens and also a potential problem that I may have noticed. Also, after seeing my review of the JK Inverter BMS, lithiumcells.co.za, that's the online store that I bought both of those BMSs from, uh, I mentioned that in the previous video, they sent over this 4.3 inch touch display for me to look at and play around with. And how awesome is this? They also gave me some promo codes to share with you guys in case you wanna buy something from the online store. And they told me that you'll get 10% off your next order. So I'll leave the links uh, and the promo codes in the description below, so go and check that out. And by the way, I don't get anything by you guys using these promo codes. This discount is purely for you guys, so I hope it helps. So first up, we'll look at the 4.3 inch touchscreen. Now before we actually get started, I think I should explain the basic setup here. This screen is being separately powered by this Blue Nova 13 volt battery, and it's traveling through a little voltmeter so you guys can see what's going on. There's a little bit of cabling here, and the power goes directly into the back of the monitor. Then the, re the remainder of the data cable goes down onto a 16 cell battery that is on the floor next to me. Um, and I've done this so that you guys can see a live view or you can see real-time numbers on the screen. And then also later on in the video, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the screen and the app so you can see all the numbers matching. So let's have a look at some of the hardware. So the interface cable that came with this screen is very similar to this one. It was three and a half meters long and one end plugs into the BMS and the other end plugs into the screen. So as I said, on one end is a single small plug that plugs into the BMS and on the inverter BMS, it plugs in here and on the other style of BMS, it plugs in here. And about a half a meter up from that small white plug that plugs into the BMS is a six pin panel mount GX20 style connector that you can of course mount onto your battery box. And at the other end of the interface cable is a power button also with a two pin small black plug and a larger white connector that plugs into the back of the screen. So this version of the screen specifically has two loose wires coming out the back of it, a red and a yellow, and these need to be powered separately in order to power the screen. Now the yellow wire is connected to ground and the red is connected to 12 volts. And as I mentioned earlier, today we are powering this screen separately using this Blue Nova 13 volt battery. That's just in today's case, so maybe you guys are building yourself a 12 volt battery pack, then not a problem, you can connect it or power the screen directly from your battery. However, anything greater than 12 volt, let's say you've got a 48 volt pack, which is exactly the case here, um, you're going to need to use a separate battery or possibly a DC to DC step down converter uh, to drop that voltage from 48 volts down to 12 volts, which the screen needs. Everybody's case is gonna be slightly different, so just do a little bit of research, do a bit of Googling, and uh, you should find a solution that works pretty well for you. The 4.3 inch touchscreen basically has three different pages. It's got the status, the cell voltage, and the alarm page, and you change between each of these pages using the tabs at the bottom of the screen. The status page shows your overall pack voltage, charge or discharge current, state of charge in percentage, your delta voltage, that's the difference in voltage between the highest and the lowest cell, MOS is your internal MOSFET temperature in degree C, temp is your probe temperature, alarm gives you an indication if there is an alarm that's active, your average voltage is the average cell voltage, balance shows you if your balancer is on or off, Charge shows you if the charge switch is set to on or off, and discharge shows if your discharge switch is set to on or off. The cell voltage page shows individual cell voltages, and in this case, it's a 16 cell battery, so you can only see 16 values. The highest cell voltage is shown in blue, and the lowest cell voltage is shown in red. And you can see these jump around as the pack voltage changes. And the last screen is the alarm page, and clearly you can see that it is blank, that's because there's no alarm messages to be displayed. And here is an example of an overcurrent protection alarm that is activated. And you'll also notice in the app that there's a notification on the screen and the alarm indication has changed from normal to alarm. And looking at the alarm page, you can see that it shows overcurrent protection. Another cool thing that I've noticed is that if you've already got one of these two and a half inch display screens, the smaller version, um, if you've already got that wired into a battery, on the inverter side, we've got that short panel mount end that we talked about. This short lead is the same as the lead that comes with your 4.3 inch touchscreen. So all you need to do is unplug your two and a half inch screen and then plug in the 4.3 inch screen and it'll all work. 
barring the fact that this screen needs to be powered separately in this case i'm not sure if anything has changed um, i think this screen is a good couple of months old so maybe you know the newer versions of this screen uh, the the power is built into it somehow i'm not too sure that's maybe something that you guys can help with if you know any more or any different please let us know in the comments um, it's always nice to hear from you another two things i think you guys should know is that even though this is a touchscreen display it is only a display you can't change any of the bms settings using this and it's also got a wired in on off button now it's just a little press button it's wired into the loom and if you hold or you press the button in for about three seconds the bms will switch off Hopefully you guys heard that and you can see the numbers have kind of frozen on the display and to turn the BMS on, it's just one short press. There we go, there was two beeps and the display should reset and there it is resetting. So let's quickly talk about the problem that I may have noticed. Now, I don't know if it is specific to this screen because it's, it's old, maybe there are newer versions of the screen that have newer firmware on them, but as you can see, the screen is on and it is working perfectly well but it is going to stay on all the time. Now, some cases you might want this, but like in my case, I don't really want this. I want the display to go to sleep. So what I've noticed, um, and if you guys are familiar with the BMS app, um, there's a setting, a display always on setting. Now at the moment, this setting is on and the display stays on and everything works. However, if I turn the display setting off, straight away you can see what the display is doing. So um, it's kind of... I don't know if it's going to sleep and uh, maybe it's losing its data, its data stream and the screen doesn't know what to do with itself. But anyway, it, it carries on or it continues in this uh, cycle and you can't get it to sort of to come back. Sometimes you can hear the screen like kind of pick up your finger and it uh, beeps, but nothing ever happens. So to get it to work normally, once again, I need to go back to the display always on setting. I need to turn that on and you can see it is actually still doing that. What you need to do is press the little power button once and wake up the display and then it works again. So um, if you guys know any different or, or any more about this, please let us know in the comments. I'm sure there's some of you <laughs> anywhere, somewhere around the world that have experienced this and uh, it may be irritating you. Hopefully this is a bit of a workaround. Unfortunately, the display is gonna be on all the time um, unless you wanna make a separate switch on your power um, on, your, on the power that supplies the, the display, but then of course you're gonna power it up and power it down each time. Hopefully there is a fix for it. Uh, please let me know if there is. So now let's have a look at the smaller two and a half inch display screen. And before we do, just to tell you how everything is configured here, we've got this display screen connected directly into a BMS or into a battery bank that's down to my left hand side here. Um, and there's no other cabling needed. Now this little uh, screen plugs in, as we mentioned before, it's got a similar cable to the larger display. It's the short cable and the little white plug plugs into the inverter style BMS over here and it in plugs into the older style or the other style BMS over here. And it's also got that same panel mount six pin GX20 style connector. The two and a half inch display only has one screen that shows state of charge in percentage, your charge or your discharge current in the bottom left, pack voltage in the bottom right, and an alarm icon that will be displayed in the top right hand corner if an alarm is triggered. And here's an example of an overcurrent protection alarm that is activated. And you can see the red warning sign at the top right of the screen and an error three sign at the top left. And if you remember back to that larger display's overcurrent warning, that was also a number three warning. And also like the larger screen we looked at earlier, you can't change any settings on this. It only displays information. Also on the right hand side, there's a little gray button and that is the power button. So it's also the sleep wake button, by the way. So you can see at the moment the screen is sleeping and if I momentarily press it, it should wake up. And if I momentarily press it again, it'll go to sleep. However, if you need to turn off your BMS for whatever reason, you would press and hold this button. There we go. Hopefully you guys heard that. The BMS beeped and now it has turned off. And to turn the BMS back on, you would just momentarily press the gray button once again. It should beep and then turn back on. And there we go. Our screen is back on and the numbers or the data should show up pretty quickly.
And here's another issue that I found with the smaller screens. It's kind of opposite to the problem that we have with the bigger screen. So the small screen, I'm sure you've seen during the video, um, the BMS has been on, but it's been asleep most of the time. So when you wake it up, you press the button, it wakes up and in the BMS app, it is set to go to sleep after about 20 to 30 seconds. And it does that as expected. However, if you, in the app, if you set the display to always on, it still goes to sleep. So it doesn't actually stay always on. <laughs> Whereas the larger display doesn't want to go to sleep, but it's happy to stay always on. Now, this is gonna be probably fixed in some firmware or some software updates at a later stage. Uh, maybe it is already and I just don't know about it. I think I've got the latest firmware and software though. Um, but again, if you guys know any different, please let us know in the comments. But this is really small things. It doesn't really bother me too much. And hopefully it doesn't bother you guys. And that is pretty much it. Now, if there's anything that I've missed or anything that possibly changes in the future, I will leave that information in the description below. So make sure to go and check that out. I'll also leave links to review videos of both the older style BMS and the inverters uh, BMS that I've done in the description if you guys are interested in those. Also, you're welcome to go and browse the channel. They are all there. Also, possibly in an upcoming video, I'm gonna look at connecting two JK inverter BMSs running in parallel using the CAN communication to communicate with the Sunsync converter. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I hope you guys have found the video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. It is always wonderful to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.